Well, welcome everybody to Inside the Lab. So this is a forum with a group of some of our technical experts here at Phenomenex. Um, this week's subject is SLE, one of our favorite sample preparation techniques. Um, we have a panel with Matt, Danny, and Bernd. I'm Jenny, I will be your moderator. Um, I work with the product marketing team, so I worked on the sample prep team and now I help manage that group. Uh, Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Brucius. I am the product manager for sample prep at Phenomenex. Uh, I've been with the company for over 10 years, and um, SLE is my favorite extraction technique. So that's a fun fact that's relevant technically. So yeah, thanks for joining. Awesome. And Danny or Daniel, whatever you prefer. Uh, I go by Danny. I only get called Daniel and I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> so let's avoid that for now. But um, but yeah, uh, my name is Danny Buckin. I am a, a clinical uh, industry account manager at Phenomenex. I've been working here for six years. Um, and most of that time I've been supporting labs that do have to do pretty significant um, matrix cleanup initially um i was working with forensic labs right so they deal with a lot of blood post-mortem blood um you know so so uh, sle has been a really important technique for that that we've been working on really you know perfecting good solutions for the customer so i guess that qualifies me to be here i would say so yeah and burn do you want to introduce yourself yeah, for sure. Hi, my name is Bernd, Bernd Tierfelder. I'm located in Germany in our um, German Phenomenex site, and I'm the product specialist for all of our sample prep products to which uh, SLE belongs. And um, I'm supporting our inside sales team and also our customers in regards to um, applications and questions and troubleshooting some issues. I'm also visiting them. I'm doing some uh, practical work in their labs and so on. So I think, yeah, awesome. by that, I should be qualified to uh, <laughs> be You guys are all and, qualified, uh, I will say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So the way that this goes so, is um, we've done a previous one on like biological matrices. So we have had some customer questions from that. Um, and then in the meantime, we have a technical team that we record a lot of the questions that come in. So these are customer questions. And then we added in a couple um, just on our own to um, just things that we've heard from different um, different accounts or reps um, that we think would be helpful. So, um, Matt, I know you just did a webinar and this was a question from one of your webinars. First and foremost, can you just give an easy explanation of what SLE is? That's funny. Yeah. So, uh, so SLE is, uh, I guess it's, uh, it's supported liquid extraction. I always make the extra effort to call it solid supported liquid liquid extraction because I think that defines what the technique does a little bit better, right? So um, it's using a solid support to perform liquid liquid extraction. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's using a relatively inert scaffolding that helps uh, really increase the surface area of your sample, which allows you to get um, a rapid efficient extraction um so like the way that you would do that with a traditional liquid liquid extraction is you would uh you know shake your 96 well plate or shake your sep funnel like one and then two right so one of those things um but with slv in particular you don't have to do that step because the scaffolding serves as that like shaking step right to get you that um you know efficient extraction so um, so yeah, so I think it's uh, it's a great technique. It's a great alternative to liquid liquid extraction because um, it's way faster. Uh, you know, in terms of method development, it's way less labor intensive um, and not prone to a lot of the different errors that uh, you might experience with something like liquid liquid extraction. So I think as a primer, that's that's my that's the end of my answer. So. Perfect. Sounds good. And you guys can jump in if I, if I don't ask you the question in particular, if you have anything else to add. So, um, so burned, what type of matrices do you recommend using SLE as a cleanup method for? So I would say all the equal samples can be used, 
like uh, biological ones, um, like plasma, serum, urine, saliva, or oral fluids, and, and aqueous extracts from fruit, from the food area, and from cosmetics, and so on. So um, removed interferences yeah, can be all highly polar compounds, like salt, sugars, proteins, even phospholipids. So a broad range of different uh, compounds or interferences can be removed from that, whereas um, the more or less hydrophobic compounds can be extracted from aqueous samples. Yeah, you need you have to have uh, to. Oh, I was just gonna to ask, you, if it's not an aqueous sample. Could you uh, turn it into an aqueous sample? The, in yes, but, but just yeah, whether you uh, um, evaporate it or you, and then will you reconstitute reconstitute? Yeah, it again in water, or you add some more water. Yeah. Yes. Because um, if um, you're using organic samples, it could be that at the loading step, the sample will break through, will pass through the SLE sorbent, and that should be prevented. Yeah. So it's possible or it's um, necessary that you're using aqueous samples, or if it's an organic sample, you just have to add some more water to get a highly aqueous sample. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think that kind of drives um, as well, like what your extracting solvent can be in a lot of cases. Um, so I know that like there are methods that um, that we've developed that we've worked on that contain as much as like 25% IPA in an aqueous mixture. And, um, you know, uh, still you get, you know, um, admissible, you get you get two solvents that are admissible if you extract with something like hexane or heptane, something really, really nonpolar. Mm -hmm. Um, but like in that same example, if you know your your sample is 25% IPA, you probably shouldn't be extracting with ethyl acetate, mm -hmm. right? You 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 run some sort of uh, 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 risk of potentially um, you know having making the two solvents miscible in, in particular, and then if that's mm -hmm. you, you'll really notice like a slow flow rate or clogging cartridges if you um, happen to try and do SLE uh, with two miscible phases as opposed to like two immiscible phases, so. Um, it's pretty obvious when that happens, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think that the the initial starting sample matrix will mm -hmm. kind of drive and determine what your extraction solvent can be in some cases. Um, not always, but just like a little caveat to think about sometimes. So, but. yeah, and just jumping off that. So, Danny, is there an easy way to um, select your extraction solvent if you're working with SLE? Um, yeah, it's it's going to, for one, depend on your analyte, I think. Um, you know, you want it to match up pretty well with, you know, if, it, if it's going to be a more hydrophobic analyte, you might have to go with a, a stronger elution solvent, right? Um, but I, I think really significantly with SLE, you want to you know, check, is it a, a synthetic SLE like Novum? Then Novum Pro, or is it a traditional um, SLE like Strata DE with diatomaceous earth? Because that's something where the extraction solvent comes uh, into play and is really important. Um, because with Novum, you know, which is really awesome, it's synthetic, it's super, super reproducible. Um, it's better to use oxygenated solvents. So if you do something like try, like pure hexane is something that you're not going to want to do. Um, you know, so you may have to mix it with a little bit of IPA, um, you know, uh, in order to to get that better extraction. Um, and but generally, you know, I think we try to even with with either format, it's always good to start off with something like ethyl acetate. You know, I think we found and I'm sure Matt can back this up in a lot of the work we've done. It generally gives really clean extractions. Um, and then if you know, if it's not giving you what you want, then you can try you know, something else. Maybe DCN might be a little better. Um, maybe MTBE might be a little better, um, depending on, you know, what your analyte is. Um, or if that solvent is pulling out more contaminants and interferences than what you want, then you, th that's something where you might have to to dial it. But I mean, if it were me, I would say a lot of the time ethyl acetate is a, a good place to start. Yeah, I think um, if I could say something, I, I think that like Danny, you hit like a lot of points and I think there's like really like a lot to unpack um with <laughs> sorry with, no 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 it just it, it's like but I think I think I think what, what can be helpful is just thinking about it like in two steps right so you have 
the first aspect of how hydrophobic are my analytes, right? So for like SLE, you're talking about, it's not like SPE where it's like digital chromatography, we're talking about on and off, we're talking about reaching equilibrium. So the thing that's most important is having a concept or understanding of how hydrophobic your analytes are and at what particular pH is. And so I think if you can really, uh, inundate yourself with all of that, you know, all of the different hydrophobicities of all of the different compounds that you're looking for, um, that will help drive uh, solvent extraction as well. So like if I know that my compounds are relatively polar, if I'm working with a bunch of polar bases, then like a more polar emissible solvent will be a good choice, like an ethyl acetate, like Danny said, for sort of like uh, uh, is sort of a starting point. Um, and then, you know, as, as far as like evaluating the solvents after the fact, and I think you know, really, that's that's kind of it, right? You're 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 forced to look at how hydrophobic are your analytes, and then you screen a bunch of different solvents, and then you're done, right? You just sort of have to be critical about evaluating which solvent was really better. A lot of times, it's very intuitive, right? It's like which which one gave me better recovery? Which one can I see my peaks versus like where can I where, where can I not? I mean, there can be more complicated aspects to like you know, some solvents will be really good at removing phospholipids, others not so much. Maybe that's not even an issue for your assay in particular. So, um, you know, it just, it sort of depends. Um, you know, I would just say that like assessing the hydrophobicity of your compounds and then really looking at like the performance of the solvents in terms of recovery, um, in terms of like matrix cleanup, whether or not you're looking at something like a, like matrix factor response or uh, like post column infusion, you, you know, just really just looking at your blanks to make sure, you know, comparing between the different solvents and like looking at the general intensities that you're seeing. And are there a bunch of rogue peaks that are showing up between, you know, minutes three and five with the ethyl acetate extraction that I don't see with DCM. So like, again, um, all the things you said, Danny, totally right, you know, but I think it's just, you you have, you have this kind of system where it's like, you check out how hydrophobic they are and then you look at the solvents and then, yeah, you can kind of cheat a little bit, right? Where you're looking and knowing that like, well, the things I have are a little bit more polar. They're a little bit more non-polar. Like I'm working with fat soluble vitamins. So like, I'm gonna start with hexane, right? Or I'm gonna start with something a lot more non-polar specifically than like maybe the ethyl acetate route. I think that the other thing I would say is um, being mindful of the type of extracting solvent that you have can um, also have an effect on your like dry down time, right? So. Um, a lot of times it's important to, uh, if you're trying to dry down ethyl acetate versus if you're trying to dry down hexane, it's like 60 yeah. minutes versus 10, right? So there can be a big difference in terms of, um, of dry down time as well. Um, and then I, I think that was all I wanted to say about your point. So I'll stop talking after everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. And I think, I think method development is often something that we hear as a reason why they don't want to switch to a new type of sample preparation method. And I really do think that SLE is probably one of the easiest methods to implement and to do method development on. So, um, so yeah, Burns, I, oh yeah, uh, go for it. I, I was going to say it like fun fact, I may or may not have been financially incentivized to create applications in the past. And the fastest way to do that was to do SLV methods. So like the proof is really in the pudding. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, if you want to see someone develop a method quickly, like, uh, you should let them use SLE was the point. So anyways, you have a terrible look in your face, Jenny, sorry, but, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So burned, uh, Danny had mentioned a little bit about synthetic versus like a traditional SLE sorbent. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means and how do you know which type of SLE sorbent to select for your samples? Or how would you go about that? Yeah, okay. So the synthetic SLE material like Novum, in general, it provides better consistency and a lot to lot reproducibility compared to the natural product of diatomaceous earth, yeah, which is traditionally used for SLE. It's better. And in case of traditional SLE material, its availability might be limited or new material has to be found elsewhere in nature if a mine is done or empty. Yeah. And its um, density can vary vary a lot, which um, could lead to varying uh, reproducibility. So the synthetic novum should be used if um, ethyl acetate is extraction solvent of choice. So in traditional SLE, more DCM or methylene chloride or hexane, MTBE and other non-polar organic solvents are usually used. And in general, Novum can be recommended for the biological samples like plasma, serum, and so on, and extraction of compounds with some polar functional groups. 
Ja? Whereas the Strata.de or the Diet of Measures Earth, the traditional SLE, can more be used well for the traditional SLE applica applications in which um, highly hydrophobic analytes should be extracted. So that's the slide. There's a difference, yeah, but it's slight. It's okay. not too big, but there is one. Yeah. Awesome. And then Matt, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say the, the distinction that I usually like to make is that, or at least the way that I kind of view the two products like working together is the fact that uh, DE diatomaceous earth is really solvent agnostic, right? It doesn't, there's no caveats. Um, it is really like if you're going from a liquid liquid extraction into an SLE product, um, that is the first step that we would recommend specifically, um, just because you, there's not going to be any like any discrepancies between like, well, I'm using this solvent for my liquid liquid extraction and um, I have to worry about how to make that work on my SLE plate for the most part. So I think that, um, you know, DE serves as a really good like bridge between liquid liquid extraction and, um, and SLE. And then I think that, you know, um, Novum in particular, like Byrne mentioned, is uh, more consistent. It's a lab manufactured sorbent. It's not um, prone to the same batch to batch reproducibility issues that you might see with the diatomaceous earth products. So, you know, we really view it as a premier solution um, specifically, but uh, admittedly, there are like some like tricks of the trade that you kind of have to work out um, in some cases, in certain situations, not all of them. Um, you know, again, uh, speaking to uh, what Danny mentioned previously about oxygenated solvents and those types of things as well. So um, we have a ton of application notes that uh, that, that uh, were put together um, under a certain guise. And so uh, they should help you in, you know, kind of making that transition. But um, that's all I was going to say is just kind of how they how they sort of fit in. But you were going to ask something, Jenny? Yeah, I was going to ask. So <laughs> Danny had mentioned something about Novum Pro. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what Novum Pro is compared to Novum? Sure. Yeah. So Novum was developed uh, probably back in like 2014, I want to say we launched it. And so uh, technology has improved pretty substantially since 2014 in particular. Um, in that mass specs have uh, probably gotten 100 times more sensitive. I, I say 100, but more, more, more like 10 times realistically. But, um, you know, uh, it. It, what Novum Pro is, is it is a uh, newer, cleaner uh, version of Novum that is compatible with um, more high-end mass specs um, than previously, uh, previously tested. Um, if you think about the process for uh, something like uh, solid phase extraction, um, a lot of times what we're doing is we're conditioning with strong solvents um, prior to eluding with strong solvents. And so a lot of times what that helps with is uh, kind of like a pre-cleaning of the cartridge, um, if you will. So um, we're pretty much doing the same thing with Novum Pro for you, right? So we're pretty much like preconditioning it for you for lack of uh, eloquency, but um, that's sort of what's going on here. And, uh, you know, we're uh, definitely doing a lot more. There is uh, a substantial amount of fit for purpose QC testing that goes into it um, in order to uh, make sure that the product is compatible uh, with uh, high-end mass specs. And so there's an LCMS test that's done on a 6500 plus. Um, each production lot is uh, screened. So every time we pack plates, um, they're they're screened and uh, uh, basically looked at to make sure that the baseline um, is acceptable and that there's no you know unwanted contaminants. Um, and uh, we also do a, a lot of other rigorous engineering controls um, that really um, that are uh, really necessary in order to maintain a product that is um, acceptable for a wide range of uh, assays, you know, done on these really, really high end aspects. 6500, they speak a lot of like Psyx language, obviously, because of the Danaher connection, but 6500, 7500, 8500. I mean, I bet they're all coming, right? So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, anyways, it's just sort of a, a way to keep up with those really, you know, super highly sensitive assays that require, you know, single digit parts per trillion level determination of um, compounds that don't light up that good on the mass spec, basically. So, um, that, that, that's what I would say about it. Um, you know, just kind of uh, like kind of keeping up with the times realistically. Um, but uh, yeah, that's 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 my answer. So. Okay. so and then Danny, so if you're talking to a customer and they're looking for a SLE solution 
and they may have like a large panel of analytes in urine or something like that, when how would you know what to recommend for them um, if you're looking at Novum versus Novum Pro versus Strata DE? Right, so if it's a, a large um, panel in urine, um, yeah, that's a good question. Guess, yeah, would yeah. you even go with SLE? Like what's, what is the route that you would, a customer should yeah, take? Well, I, I would say, yeah, I think to some extent it would depend on which analytes are in the screen. You know, I think, you know, it could be maybe 20 or 40 or 50. So if it's if it's something where it's, you know, a very, very large um, panel of analytes where, you know, there's a lot of acids, bases, neutrals that may not all agree with each other, then SLE might not be the best route, but it is, it definitely is possible and is done um, on SLE, I think. Um, but I, the, the really important thing is to, you know, find the right pH to where you're going to get, you know, a, a good amount of neutralization among the analytes. Because the important thing for SLE when we're developing the method is that in order for the analytes to transfer from the aqueous into the organic and be extracted, they need to be in a neutral state. Um, that way they are, you know, they'll partition a lot more easily. Um, so so we, we have to really find that, that tune to where we can do that, right? And I think once we can find that um, from a, a chemistry standpoint, you know, whether it's Novum, Novum Pro, um, or, or Strata DE may not be as important, um, as long as whichever extraction solvent that we that works best for those analytes is able to work with, you know, either the traditional DE or Novum. Now, depending on the needs of the lab, if it's something where, you know, there's a very, very strict, um, you know, uh, need for for reproducibility, like Byrne said, you know, Novum is synthetic. It provides very, very strict um controls on the on the the type of material that's made so we were very assured that it's going to be very consistent and reproducible um you know diatomaceous earth it's a uh, it's a uh, uh an, an, a fossil basically right some are big some are little um so you don't quite have that same um uh, reproducibility um but so so i think in that in that case nova might be a little bit better um, and uh, and if you know, and I would say that whether you're going to go with Novum or Novum Pro would depend on what the cutoffs are, what your you know lower limit of quantitation is. If it's something that's you know still up in the nanogram level plus, you're getting really good detection. Um, it's it's ionizing very efficiently, as Matt says. If it's lighting up really well on the mass spec, you know you may not need the the additional um, you know fit for purpose testing that goes into Novum Pro and Novum, you know, uh, original, <laughs> Novum Classic might, might be best for you. Um, but if you're looking into, you know, you really have to go down to some picogram levels, um, maybe there are some steroids on your panel or something, right? Um, that's, that's when we really need to take the Novum Pro to really, really um, ensure that the background is low enough for you. Um, so I know that's, my answers are never simple, sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. Novum Pro, we have some applications on testosterone and estrogen, um, just because yeah. that's really where we've seen kind of the need for Novum Pro. But yeah, if I was in the lab developing a method, I'd probably just call you guys because you guys have way more knowledge on the product. <laughs> um, so Burned, if, if a customer is working with whole blood, what type of pre-treatment um, steps do they need to go through before they um, implement their SLE method? Or what would you recommend, I guess? Oh, um, yeah, I think you can understand that you cannot load the whole blood sample directly to a SLE cartridge. So it should be prepared in a certain way. So I would recommend not to introduce too much of organic um, just dilute it with water. Yeah, that uh, leads to the fact that the red blood cells will uh, be uh, destroyed. Yeah, so we'll get a more or less homogeneous solution. Yeah, and that is something that you can use after centrifugation that you can use for the SLE. So I would recommend using that way. Maybe you can add some um, what is it called zinc sulfate 
to precipitate uh, the proteins, yeah, which will also be removed by um, the precipitation and by centrifugation so that it is not loaded to the SLE cartridge as well, which could give you some um, better and more reproducible and reliable results. Yeah, So I would really recommend treating the whole blood sample in a certain way, adding some water. Maybe some customers are also using some methanol yeah, to uh, destroy the red blood cells or to get a homogeneous uh, solution. But then it could be that uh, after loading that kind of samples, it isn't remained on the, on the sorbent. It will break through at the loading step. So we have to add some more water. So my first choice would be adding just some water, try it out, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think I think whole blood and SLE is kind of tough in general, just because, like Bryn mentioned, there's a lot of upfront manipulation of the sample that needs to happen, and um, in doing so, you know, you're you really start increasing your sample size, and that is the limiting factor for the 96 well plates or tubes that you're using. So. You know, in a lot of cases with like an SPE method for whole blood, um, you know, you'd be okay saying, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, lice the red blood cells. I'm going to even crash them out prior and then I'm going to end up with a bunch of organic and I'm going to dilute it way up. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to load it on to, you know, this three mil solution onto my SPE cartridge and really concentrate everything up. I think with SLE, it's tough because, you know, all of a sudden now, if you end up with a three mil sample size, you're looking at like a really big, you know, really big tube that you have to use. And um, that's just going to increase the amount of solvent you have to extract with. You don't get the same. You're really not getting any concentration effect that you would, um, you know, necessarily get with like SPE, uh, you know, prior to um, the dry down and reconstitution step with like SPE, for example, right? You'll, you'll load a mill on, you can elude off in 100 microliters or something. Uh, for example, and I think that um, it's just kind of a dangerous game, in my opinion, um, the whole blood example with SLE, just because, yeah, you, you do want to manipulate your sample up front, and then all of a sudden you go from a 200 microliter plate to a 400 microliter plate to a two gram cartridge, like really quick, I think. And so um, to me, it's like probably not like the best choice. I've done it, um, but uh, it's just my two cents. Yeah. And then, Danny, since you used to work with a lot of forensic labs, what would you, would that be the same recommendation for dried blood or does dried blood work a little differently? Um, what would you recommend? Um, dry blood, I think, would be a little difficult just because I generally you need something to get it off of the, the paper, right, which is usually some type of organic. So it might not be the best way to go because you have to, like, pull it off with methanol and then you end up with a lot of organic. Um, I, but I know a lot of the forensic labs will would have to deal with postmortem blood, which is a lot more difficult too. Because even you know, like Matt said, all of the the manipulation you have to do with like standard blood with with postmortem blood, it tends to be a lot more congealed and thicker. And um, you know, I know sometimes there's like a, a lot of sonication that has to happen on the front end and other um, types of of prep work, but but yeah, as far as um, dry blood spots, yeah, it might. It, I don't think it would be the best, just because you need some type of organic to pull it off, and then you know that that makes it tricky. Yeah. So it sounds like urine, plasma, those are fine matrices, but then maybe whole blood might be a little bit more work. Not that it won't work, but just a little bit more to get it ready for SLE. Um, Matt, is there any other methods that you would not recommend using SLE for? Um, that you would say probably move to SPE or something a little bit more specific. Um, for example, someone wrote in about oral fluid, and I wasn't quite sure what the method um, development would be for that. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily try and. I mean, the whole blood is, an ex or I guess, a caveat to what I was about to say, but. I would try and really decide what extraction technique I'm choosing based off of the analyte set first. Um, and then sort of, I mean, the matrix is really important, like sample matrix determines separation mode, um, if you're familiar with like SPE method development. But um, I think if, if if I was, if you, you asked me like, is there something I wouldn't recommend it for? And, and, and really probably just 
really, really polar things, right? I mean, I, I'm kind of a big fan, or I'm a fan of like SLV in general, when we're talking about, again, everything is based off of reaching equilibrium. So, you know, getting relatively hydrophobic stuff out of aqueous based samples, right? They're gonna want to partition relatively easily. I think like, um, so yeah, so like the really nonpolar ones are gonna work uh, real good, right? So um, the, the, like fat soluble vitamins, I mean, they really are down to jump out of the aqueous sample into uh, nonpolar solvents pretty quick. Um, but by contrast, like, you know, if you have uh, really polar bases, you know, they, they're just going to want to stay behind in the aqueous base samples. And then, you know, as a result, you probably you might get efficient extraction for some things, but I would just sort of shy away from, I, I, I guess my the way to answer your question is like, I like it when things are really hydrophobic and um, can be or moderately to relatively hydrophobic and can jump out of aqueous relatively easily. Uh, I don't like the idea of having like these really polar compounds and like trying to manipulate the sample with um, either like additional salt or really extreme pHs to try and get those things to partition. I almost feel like um, in that particular example, you'd be better off doing like ion exchange um, SPE where you have the the um, the mechanism for extraction is uh, seemingly in my mind a little bit more rugged, like a little bit more reproducible specifically than like, um, you know, trying to get this really polar thing to jump out of water um, into something that's less polar than water. So, um, so I would just kind of separate it in terms of like classes of compounds. I mean, obviously, uh, oral fluid just in general is kind of brutal, right? Like there's really no right answer to that question. Um, you know, it's lots of surfactants uh, and, you know, SPEs. Okay, right. It's kind of like as good as you can really do with it. So, um, but uh, you know, with 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 SLE, it just it just sort of depends. I mean, you can play around the solvents and stuff, but um, I don't have a great answer for that. But that's just kind of how I would think about deciding, you know, whether or not I would choose SLE or um, choose like an SPE or, or or something else. So, yeah, and I think the the polarity thing is really important because we have these sort of cutoffs. I think for SLE, it's like what we would say a log P like uh, higher than like one or above, right? Something like that. So, um, and, then, yeah. and then like strata X, you know, which has a lot of our SPE, which are, which is, you know, awesome and has a lot of, um, you know, polar interactions. It can go down to a log P of about negative one. So something, you know, that's in that, you know, lower polarity area, something where you would want to go the SPE route. Awesome. So I think we're almost at time. Is there anything, um, any other things that you guys want to just end on? Anything that popped up while we were chatting or last minute thoughts? So I would like to add that the SLE should be a good alternative to a standard liquid, liquid extraction methods. Yeah, whenever you have an yeah traditional standard liquid liquid extraction method and you would like to improve the results yeah may you have some problems with emulsions or with reproducibility yeah some problems in um removing the upper layer from the layer below that yeah then we would uh, recommend sle using as an alternative to the liquid liquid extraction methods yeah, yeah. so and because I, and I it really can help um <laughs> to make the standard LLE um, applications more rugged, more reliable, and more robust. Gotcha. Yeah, I think we, you know, we we've gone in a lot of the technical weeds, but that shouldn't obscure the fact that SLE is awesome because it's so simple. You load your sample, you wait a couple minutes, and then dilute it. It's that easy, right? So yeah. that is really, really an amazing part of it. There's not a whole lot of steps to it. It's very simple. There's only a a couple um you know things you need to adjust to get your method down so it's you know it, there are a lot of caveats but it is overall a super super simple um technique for extractions very simple very reproducible um very easy to use so i, I think that you know for all the detail we shouldn't gloss over you know really how how simple and powerful it is as a technique yeah it's it's load you wait a couple minutes and you use your elution solvent. Um, so super, super easy. Um, yeah, 96, I mean, we have different formats, 96 well plates. Um, with Strata DE, we have a very large format that we call our Giga tube, um, but we have plenty of other types of tubes in both Novum and Strata DE. Uh, yes, Matt? 
I was just going to say the extent of method development, a lot of cases like the, the labor intensive part is like literally like potentially just mixing solvents together, right? That's that's like that's that's what you have to do. I mean, prior to like loading and eluding, right? So the most time that you'll spend in the lab is if you're messing around with binary solvents and, you know, mixing different parts of hexane with ethyl acetate with DCM, with those types of things. And then, yeah, it's very like it's very simple because it's a very brute force method where you're not you're not hunting to find out where you lost your analyte so that it will tell you how to adjust your method. It's just, it's very, it's very, it's very black and white, right? You see it and the results are what they are and that's, that's it. So just speaking, just adding a little bit more color to the uh, comment about it being simple, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you guys for your time today. Thank you everyone for writing your questions in. Um, if you have any additional questions or you want help developing your method on SLE or any type of sample preparation um, method that you could talk to our technical team. So we have phenomenics.com slash chat, um, and then they can also direct you to your, to your sales rep, rep to um, further implement your method into your lab. So I just want to say thank you everyone, and we will see you guys next time.